Blues were due in this country in the autumn, and they hadn't lost an Ashes series here since 1959. Under new coach Ellery Hanley, victory in the first test stirred the nation. Jonathan Davis scored the only try, and it lifted Great Britain, who played most of the match a man down. A moment of madness saw skipper Sean Edwards sent off, but it didn't detract from what was an outstanding Wembley performance by Great Britain. They started the second test well, but opportunist Australia, not for the first time, more than demonstrated that they were going to cease from either the physical or mental fight. The score ran to 38-8 at Old Trafford. It was the other side of the coin after the euphoria of Wembley. So everything to play for in the Ellen Road decider. Great Britain showed great spirit, but were up against it. The Kangaroos had a lot left in the tank. 23-4 the final score, and they accelerated away with a party piece. And Stewart coming through. Oh, a beautiful backhanded pass to Dean Pay. That was absolute sheer class. Retiring Australian skipper Mal Meninga signed off with the Ashes retained. Domestically, the year had started with a shock. The Regal Trophy final saw Castleford convincing winners over Wigan, Castleford's first major trophy success for eight years. Cracks in the mighty Wigan? A foolish thought. The annual collection of the Challenge Cup at the expense of an Ellery Hanley-led Leeds confirmed the resumption of normal service and included a try that will be difficult to better. And Martin fire, trying to make some space. Now then, Martin fire. he's got Alan Tate to beat on the outside, and Shoot is going to go the full night. That is one sensational try. Wigan's seventh successive Challenge Cup triumph came on the back of their fifth consecutive championship. They won the Premiership too. The Central Park Club continued to break new ground and rewrite rugby league history. And to rubber stamp their year, Within days of securing their treble, and at the end of an arduous season, they flew off to beat the best Australia could throw at them, the Brisbane Broncos. Winning the World Club Challenge away from home has elevated Wigan to a position that at present is unassailable in club rugby league. Now, Team of the Year is decided by votes from within the BBC Sports Department, the principle, I suppose, of shared responsibility and shared blame. A lot of votes were cast for the likes of Manchester United, Warwickshire, Williams and Britain's world champion three-day Ventus. But convincingly topping the poll were rugby league's double winners for the fifth successive year. And this year, as you heard, they added the Premiership and took the World Club Challenge in Australia. Team of the Year are Wigan. Phil Clark, I've uh, given you the big build-up, but today a bit of a setback. Defeat at Leeds and that wonderful winning start to the season is over, but a uh, tough match by all accounts. Yeah, that happens to every team. Um, all the great sides here tonight, I realise that you know you don't win every game and uh, it's up to us to work out what we have to do and uh, to try and continue to improve. Your vice-captain, the skipper Sean Edwards, picked up an injury. Uh, what news of him? Uh, he's in hospital, actually, at the moment. He's got suspected fractured cheekbone, so uh, you know, we hope Sean's well. Well, you remain uh, the team to beat, and you're certainly the team of the year. And to make the presentation, the former Wigan chairman, now chief executive of the Rugby League, Maurice Lindsay. Maurice Lindsay with the presentation. And Wigan, our team of the year. As we've said tonight, we celebrate the 40...